This is the Monroe Model F calculator. I want to show you the mechanism uh, inside this calculator. But before I do that, I'll just show you the normal operation of the machine. I've entered the number 777 and when you turn the crank uh, from the point of this, uh, this, this marking from that, that point it starts adding the number to the register and then you have to complete the turn during which it does the uh, carry operations. Let me show you that one more time. So it first adds the digits and notes which uh, numbers need uh, a carry and that carry is performed in the second part of the turn. Subtraction is the same thing only in the opposite direction but it starts from this marker at the bottom so nothing seems to happen in this part. The subtraction starts here and now it subtracts the number noting where the carries or the, or the burrows have to happen and those are done in the second part of the turn. So let me show you inside. I've uh, unscrewed this rod for the carry, uh, carriage and this is a heavy, a very heavy uh, carriage. You note actually that uh, this corner has been repaired. There are no springs on the, uh, this rod that keep the carriage uh, connected so if you slide it too fast to one side or another it just bangs against the end and that's apparently what has happened here. So on these older machines these uh, yeah the holes at each end of the uh, of the carriage can be quite damaged. And here you see the uh, the uh, main mechanism these intermediate uh, wheels that drive the register and here are the, uh, the uh, triggers for the carry when, uh, when a number wheel in the register moves from 9 to 0 or vice versa it pushes down this, uh, this little uh, switch through a pin just here you see the, uh, uh, the stepped drums. So when I turn, <laughs> when I turn the uh, crank, you can see that those stepped drums are driving those intermediate wheels. They only uh, turn during that first half turn of the crank. Afterwards, they don't turn anymore and it's in that second half that the carries are performed. So um, during the first half after it's been added if you if I push down one some of these uh, uh, carry pins, these um, switches, you'll see that there you go, these next intermediate wheels have moved forward, the carry has been performed and then those carry switches are returned to normal. And that aspect is done by the carry drum which is at the back. So I'll move around to show you that. And here you have the, uh, the carry drum and it has these uh, these horizontal uh, pins that uh, slide sideways, and when one of these uh, when one of these uh, carry switches has been tripped, it pushes these uh, pins sideways when they pass, and then the o the other end pulls along the uh, the next intermediate wheel. But the carries have to be before, performed from 
uh, right to left um, from the low end of the register to the most significant digit of the register. So when you turn the crank, here you see that, that these pins are in a spiral going from down here, sort of diagonally up in that direction. Unfortunately, for subtraction, you need the spiral to go the other way uh, because you still need to handle the carries going from the low end to the high end because each carry or each borrow can cause the next digit to overflow or underflow as well. So a carry can cause the next digit up to carry as well and so on. So for subtraction, this spiral, this helix of pins has to go the other way. And unfortunately, those pins, or those two spirals, are at exactly the same position on this, uh, yeah, on this axle. So when you turn the other way, you suddenly need uh, the whole spiral to go in that way. And you'll see that uh, on, the, on this side you basically have two spirals, but at a certain point they cross, and after that there's only one spiral left, and all these parts, those move. During subtraction there's the, uh, part of the spiral going that way, and during addition they go up this way. Let me turn it the other way and you'll see that right now that they start shifting up until they're in position to spiral the opposite, opposite way. And if I turn this way, there you go. In the later models, they managed to put this, uh, these pins slightly closer together so that they didn't take, a take up as much room on the, uh, yeah, on the axle so that they didn't cross anymore. And also, they uh, yeah, changed the, the timing of everything so that uh, yeah, this whole problem uh, disappeared and uh, this rather complicated but clever solution uh, was no longer necessary. There is another small difference between uh, this model and the Model K. I already mentioned that uh, these stepped drums, they only uh, rotate during the first part of the turn. On the later models that's no longer the case, and that's because they, on the Model K for example, the, stepped, the parts of the stepped drum only cover half the, the uh, full circle. So it can continue um, it can continue to turn all the way through the uh, turn of the crank but uh, they only engage with those intermediate wheels during half of that turn. These, uh, these step drums are also uh, on this old model they're made of yeah, just disc with uh, pins slotted into it. So here you see pins of different lengths uh, pointing, pointing to the left out of, uh, out of a disc. So that was the mechanism of the Model F Monroe calculator. Thank you for watching.